Since the beginning of creation, to the baptism of Christ, to the birth of the church at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit continues to minister today and he longs to have a divine encounter with all of us. to experience a personal, intimate, and transformative encounter with the Holy Spirit. Divine Encounter with the Holy Spirit. Available now. Today, the criteria for ministry is to uh, graduate from a Bible school or to have a basis of knowledge or education. In the Bible, the criteria to be in ministry, to be one of the gospel preachers, you need to be empowered. You need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not an option. The Holy Spirit is a necessity and is a command. Jesus said, don't ever go out from here until you be empowered with the Holy Ghost to be healed, to be delivered, to be changed, to be transformed. All human needs required a move of the Holy Spirit. Mientras estaba en tiempo de oración, el Señor me habló y me dijo, quiero que establezca la escuela del Espíritu con el propósito de abrir los ojos y los oídos de la iglesia para poder discernir los tiempos que vivimos y prepararse para el tiempo final. Hoy decido caminar en el Espíritu, decido no vivir en la carne. Abre mis ojos. Abre mis oídos para ver, para oír. Dame discernimiento para ver los tiempos que estamos viviendo. Para ver tu gloria siendo derramada. Has hablado tu palabra. Creo tu palabra. Envíame a mí. Yo voy por la cosecha. It is a time of enormous disruption in America and all around the world as many of our daily routines are being upended. Mientras estaba en tiempo de oración. Missiles rain down. El Señor me dijo, quiero que establezca la escuela del Espíritu. Widespread famine. Con el propósito de abrir los ojos y los oídos de la iglesia. Para poder discernir los tiempos que vivimos conditions we haven't seen. Y prepararse para el tiempo final. The number of coronavirus there is fear and many other concerns. The Issachar generation is not just for prophets. The Lord told me it's not about a title, but are you available to hear the voice of God? Somebody lied to you and they told you you're an audience. God doesn't need an audience. I want an army. I need 300 fighting men. So if there's ever a time that there should be miracles, it is now. In order to worship in spirit and in truth, you need to know Jesus. You need to offer yourself. If not, you cannot reach the Father. After the school of the supernatural, we have to go out. We have to go to the north. We have to go to the south. We have to go to the east. We have to go to the west. We have to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ.
experiencia eh, con la Escuela del Espíritu ha sido superadora. Esto es eh, trayendo vida al Espíritu, es cambiando y transformando el corazón, la mente. Hay pocas palabras para explicarlo, es extraordinario. Veo muchas de las iglesias y pastores amigos que están durmiendo. Y creo llevar un despertar, creo llevar un avivar a estos hombres y mujeres que son de Dios, pero están como yo estuve, en la pura religión. Hoy no, hoy estamos en el movimiento, en lo sobrenatural. Has hablado tu palabra. Creo tu palabra. Y oro, Señor. Que mientras este pueblo va, esta escuela del Espíritu es para restaurar las señales en la iglesia. Lo que nos hace distinto al montón que tú estás con nosotros. Los envío en tu nombre. Levanta tu mano y dice Señor, heme aquí. Envíame a mí. Diga yo por la cosecha.
Who's ready to praise the Lord this morning? Right there where you're at, just lift up your hands with me. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We will remember his goodness and celebrate him. We welcome you into this place.
celebrate you. Come on, can we celebrate Jesus? Can we celebrate the Holy Spirit? Can we celebrate our God? Celebrate Him. Celebrate Him.
I'm going to ask everybody to lift your hands to Jesus. You know what I hear the Holy Spirit saying? Let the people to dance in my presence. I'm going to ask everybody to close your eyes and lift your hands quickly. And I want you to take this next five minutes to dance in the presence of God. Dancing means moving your hands, moving your feet, moving your mouth. And let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Dance. Dance in the presence. Dance in the presence. Come on, release yourself. Release yourself. Have the liberty. What the Spirit of God is, there is liberty.
presence of God is real I want to see your hands if it's not what you have is a religion because the presence of God is so real I enjoy being in the presence I enjoy worshiping God I enjoy praising the Lord come on put your hand together I enjoy you know so many people say okay I am waiting until I get to the church to praise God. Don't do it in your home. Because what you practice in private, it will be easy to do it in public. So just move when you know, move your hands, clap, shout. Feel free, don't be conscious of yourself. Be conscious of God. Come on, come on, come on. Praise be into the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to go to two or three people and tell them, I love you, my brother and sister. You're very special to me. Come on, give a hug to somebody. Yes, Lord. Thank you, guys. Good job. Thank you, dancers. Good job. Thank you. Be ready, just in case. If the Holy Spirit start moving, you just get out of dancing. Come on. Yeah, I love your daughter. Where have you been? I haven't heard from you for the last four weeks. Um, I'm going to ask the, to take, get him closer. So can you lift your hands to the Lord? How many of you enjoy having a relationship, close relationship with the Lord? I want to see your hands. I enjoy my relationship with God. I don't change him for anything. And one of my projects, if I call it projects or goals or whatever you want to call it, is to uh, develop that relationship closer and deeper every day. My heart is to know him. My heart is to know him more every day. Can you, can you say amen to that? Amen. Okay. So I'm going to ask you, um, I'm going to teach something very powerful this morning. And um, I want you to be open. You know, one of the, uh, uh, one of what we teach in the Bible school or in King Jesus University is the knowings of God, the knowing God. The Bible, Jesus said that the knowing of God is the highest knowledge. In other words, you can have knowledge of many things, but knowing God is the highest knowledge. And number two, um, when every time we want to know God, uh, for example, if somebody asks you, who is God? And how do you answer that question? Because God is so vast, deep, is wide, is high. So without the help of the Holy Spirit, it's very hard to describe who God is. Very hard. And one of the ways, um, for example... In the Old Testament, there were what, what we call school of prophets. And the school of prophets taught two things. The ways of God 
and the voice of God, how to hear God and the voices of God, the voice of God. So why I'm saying what I'm saying, because the ways of God correspond to what the way God thinks. Your ways, the way you do things, the way you behave, the way you act correspond the way you think. So if we want to know God, we have to know the way he think. So we know his way. So to Moses, he show his ways. To the people, he shows his works. Why? Because people were not interested in knowing God. And every day when we come to church, we got the privilege and the honor to believe in a supernatural God. And we know, I want you to come with that expectation, not only to receive a miracle or healing, but also to know God. Because that's what he really found you in God. Know the ways of God. That's why we need to have a revival of the word for the people to understand and to know God. Can I hear an amen on that? So we know the ways of God. So one of the ways to know God is to know his nature. The nature, how do you know is a dog? When you see barking, when you hear dark barking, you know it's a dog. So the nature of something describe who God is. So, but today I'm going to describe one of the persons of God. You know, he is God the Father. We believe in the Trinity of God. We believe in God the Father. Lift your hands and say, I believe. In God the Father, the creator of all things. But now you need to say it like you really believe it, like, you know, like true. Okay, lift your hands and say, I believe in God the Father, the creator of all things. I believe in the Son, the only begotten Son of God. I believe in the person. Of the Holy Spirit. You can do better than that. Lift your hands and say, Father, Father I, believe I believe in the Father, in the Father as, the as the originator of all things, of all things. Invisible, 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 invisible. Say, Father, Father I believe in you. Believe you are my Father. Are my Father. I, believe I believe in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. My, son, my Son, my the Son of God. My Savior. My Savior, say, I believe, I believe in, the in the person of the Holy Spirit. Can you clap now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. The Father is the originator, the creator of all things. The Father, um, who created the Father? No one, because he's self-existent one. He got lives in himself. So they're three in one. The nature is the same. The attributes are the same. But everyone has an assignment. And every, uh, uh, every generation or every um, time and season. Uh, for example, in the beginning you see God, the creator, creating everything. And then he said, I created man, man fell. And then he said, I'm going to send my son. So his son Jesus came and died for us. So the father is the, 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 the originator of salvation. So Jesus is the one that paid for our salvation. And the Holy Spirit is the administrator. In other words, the Holy Spirit is the administrator. Okay, let me ask you a question. Um, how many of you in the past, not now because I know you all free, um, struggle with fear? I did, and I'm going to raise my, my feet, my patas, you know, everything, because I was the most fearful person on the earth. So one of the reasons why people fear is because they, the revelation of God dwelling in us is not theirs yet. For example... If there's a thief that comes to the church, we got, we got security if you're watching. <laughs> so if, if somebody comes 
and you have one bodyguard armed with weapon, you know, with a rifle, and he is taking care of you. He's protecting you. The question is, would you be afraid? There's some still afraid, but <laughs> are you be afraid? Why? Because you know somebody is with you. If God is with you, inside of you, why are you going to be afraid? Right? So that became so re revelation to me. And I said, God dwells in me. It's not only um, with me, but also with me, inside of me. So the father finished his work in Genesis, and he rested. What is he doing now? He's taking a piña colada in heaven. He say, I'm resting. So now he sent his son to die and pay for our salvation, right? So now what Jesus said, it is finished. All sickness I pay for. All sin I pay for. So it is finished. Lift your hands and say, it is finished. Now there's one person of the Trinity that has not finished. The Holy Spirit. He has not finished. He's working. He's working. He's working in the end time. He's working. And he is living inside of us, but he's working. He's moving. He hasn't stopped because the rapture has not taken place. So understanding, I want you to see <clears throat> the work of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to speak to you this morning. Uh, you already now from this moment forward should you put. I'm going to speak to you this morning about the Holy Spirit helping us to intercede. I'm going to talk to you about, come on, put your hand together. So the Holy Spirit is the most ignored person of the Trinity in the church today. It's the most rejected. It's the most um, uh, despised. Because no one tells you anything if you're normal Christian. But if you're supernatural Christian, if you have the ingredients of the Holy Spirit and power, everybody get upset. So it's the most ignored. We don't make room for the Holy Spirit. And I'm not saying only in services and our personal life. So this message will apply to your personal life. It will apply to your family, to your business, to your job. Because he been standing all this time waiting on you to ask him for help. Did you understand? In other words, he been asking, he's waiting, but because subconsciously in the churches, we ignore him, we quenched him, we grieve him. Because if he wants to move, and I literally stop the movement of the spirit, right there he quenched. He turned off. We turn off the fire. So it's the same thing of quenching. For example, there's some sins that quench, that grieve the spirit. Grieve means to cause him pain, affliction, sadness. And when he is sad, when he's grieving us, he will move. So one of the sins that, that causes him to be sad is lying. Bitterness. A bitter person. You have to <clears throat> make sure 100% that the Holy Spirit is totally grieved in his life. Or there is her life. So we understand. I want you to hear me closely because this message will help you when I learn. And I'm still learning. How to ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. I ask for the Holy Spirit anything I need. Anything in my personal life. Lord, how do you want me to pray for this? Or oh, what do you want to teach me about this? What do you want to say? In other words, I go to him because the Bible says, I'm going to give you another comforter. In other words, that comforter came to dwell inside of us. But it just came just as a... As an ornament, but he came to help us. 
and we have access to him. So I want you to see the, the work of the Holy Spirit in and through us. As a believer and as a minister, we need him desperately. And I want you to see the work of the Holy Spirit in us and through us. Sometimes when he works in us, and I want you to see the first one, the Holy Spirit comforts us. Comforts us. Number two, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us. The word comfort, we're going to go in a minute. Number three, the Holy Spirit teach us. Okay, if you have me as your pastor, what is my job as a pastor? It's to teach you. It's to um, care for you. It's to establish you in your faith. So the Holy Spirit can do all that he teaches us do you know anything about for example there's an issue in your life I say Holy Spirit can you teach me you go to the Bible say Holy Spirit teach me but we don't he is a gentleman and he never interfere if you don't invite him can I hear an amen so he doesn't because he's he's a gentleman and he's waiting on us to ask him. So he teaches. He dwells on us. The Holy Spirit reminds us. When I was going to college, I studied eight hours, ten hours, and I asked Holy Spirit. And, and in the test, I forgot three questions, the answer. So I said, Holy Spirit, remind me what I studied. And he did. See, the thing is, many of you are asking, no, you don't study and say, Holy Spirit, remind me. What is going to remind you? <laughs> so with the Holy, everything with the Holy Spirit is two things. Lift your hands and say, two things. Two things. Two things is cooperation and participation. In other words, he doesn't do the work for us. He doesn't expect to, for you to do the whole work either. It's a joint partnership. So that's why we need to yield to him. We need to allow him. How many of you have a struggle in one area of your life that you prayed and you pray and you rebuke, you bind Satan, you brought a, a, a lasso from Home Depot and you bind him and, and release him. The, the whole, you did the whole thing. Well, and he been waiting to tell you exactly how to pray for that situation. He said, just ask me. Can I hear an amen? So the Holy Spirit testified to us and through us. He testified to us and through us. The Holy Spirit convict us. What do you mean convict us? Convict, conviction is nothing more to being persuaded to admit the truth. In other words, when the Holy Spirit comes to convict the world, and a Christian too, is to say, is persuade you to say, I want you to admit you're wrong. And number two, the Holy Spirit convinces us. I like this one. Because to the world, he convicts of sin. And also Christian there in sin. But now, convince us of righteousness. What does that mean? He convinces you that you are righteous. Meaning, you are on a right standing with God. Because when you go to pray, you feel guilty. Oh, yeah, but yesterday, oh, I said a lie. Yes, oh, my God. And then, but you went and repent. But when you repent, he convinced you. He said, you are righteous. You are holy. So I don't persuade myself that I'm a holy man. It's the Holy Spirit who convinced me of my righteousness. I wish I can hear it. Amen. Now, number eight, the Holy Spirit comes to guide us. To guide us in what? To do the service? To guide us in your job. 
to guide you in how to pray, to guide you in, uh, if you're single, who are you going to get married with? He will guide you. Oh, no, I don't think God is the Holy Spirit is going to get. That's the thing. You want to include it only in some things. He, wants, he said, I want to be your partner even in your business. I want to guide you to have a close contract. And I want to guide you into bigger contracts. But trust me. Put your hand together. Okay, so he said the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes to reveal things to us. Reveal things to us. What do you mean? There's some things in your life and the word and my personal life that we don't know them. There's a veil to it. So what he comes is remove the veil. And then you said, ah, I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Touch your name. I got it. So you, you got it. So, and then you say the Holy Spirit comes to help us to worship the Father. In other words, you cannot even worship. I cannot even worship without the help of the Holy Spirit. I, I can't even help. I need the Holy Spirit. Because he's the one that knows the Father. He's the one what to say. He knows what to say. He knows everything. So if without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible to worship God in spirit and in truth. And lastly, the Holy Spirit come to help us to pray and intercede the perfect will of God. Yeah. Put your hand together. Wow. Supernatural prayers. Okay, so I want you to go and we're going to start saying, okay, now, all those 10 things, lift your hands and say, the Holy Spirit. Is my, helper. is my helper. Okay, now I want you to see this. All those 10 things, nothing will work in your life if you don't allow him. If you don't invite him. Holy Spirit, help me. I don't know. How many of you have lost something? I remember one time I lost my... Uh, my bracelet and I was in a park and I said man that was expensive bracelet <laughs> I said Holy Spirit what is it and I went to a place where I, I, I have looked for it like 20 times but it was there so he knows where your family is Holy Spirit, where is my son today, Friday night? Is it is with remnant youth? No, he's in the disco. Oh, let me pray. Father, take him out. Bring conviction on his heart. Can I hear an amen, people? So, see, we, we need to understand that the Holy Spirit is ready. We must allow him. We must make room for him. In my personal life, I make room. I say, Holy Spirit, I don't go with, you know, okay, Lord, I'm going to pray for this. I'm going to pray. Well, I do have certain things, a guide to pray. But I say, Holy Spirit, you tell me, what do you want me to pray for? I don't know how to pray. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you something. I don't know how far I'm going to go. Did you put the time back? No, you, you didn't. You stole 16 minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go. So I want you to, uh, the introductions. how many of you want to understand the person of the Holy Spirit? The Bible says, and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with you. If we want to be successful in every area, let the Holy Spirit teach you, guide you, comfort you, convince you, um, help you. So it's the Holy Spirit. So today we have removed him from the church. So there's no room for it. We got time for announcements. We got time for music. We got time for everything, but not the Holy Spirit. So where is the part where he can say, what is my room? What is my time? We don't, we don't make the time. So now we understand. Let's go into the Bible. 
And let's go to understand his function, intercede, and help us to intercede. How many of you are you ready, ready to learn? I want to see your hands. Let's go to the Bible. Revival of the word, we need it. Okay, the Holy Spirit help us to intercede. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. John 14, 26. I'm going to give the introduction because I, you need to know why he is a helper. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Breath of God, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and he will bring things to remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. Okay, now, the word comforter. Lift your hands and say comforter. It's the word um, uh, paracletos. Paracletos. And that word paracletos, which means to be called alongside with us to help us. In other words, Jesus said, I am leaving. And you're going to have an advantage because I have a physical body. I cannot be everywhere. In that time when he was a human. And now he, Jesus said, I'm going to send the comforter. The one that is called as I'm called to be an apostle. He's called to be alongside you. In other words, his calling, the Holy Spirit has a call. And the call is to be alongside you. And what? Alongside means somebody to stand with you. And to do what? To help us, assist us, teach us, as well as to plead, to beg, to pray, to intercede in all affairs of life for us. Can you put your hand together for the Holy Spirit? Wow. So he's called to assist us. Did that make him less? No. Is that is God. But his function, he is called to be alongside us to assist us. What do you need? What are you interceding? You've been praying for so long and you don't have a breakthrough. He said, I know. I know the future. I know my will. I know the will of my father. I know your heart. I know the root of the problem. So I just need you to invite me. So he said, now the comforter, lift your hands and say, the Holy Spirit is my comforter. Touch your neighbor and tell him, the Holy Spirit is my comforter. Say it louder, please. The Holy Spirit is my comforter. The most effective prayer, the most effective prayer and in intercession is the one that we do with the help of the Holy Spirit. Number two, if we try to pray without the Holy Spirit, prayer will never be effective. It has been waiting for us, he's been waiting, saying, okay, I need help. You need help? I'm here. The Holy Spirit, write that down, requires our participation and cooperation. In other words, it's not that he's going to do it for you. He's going to do it with you. Amen. Say amen to somebody, please. Amen. You have to invite him to that situation. So I want you to write this down. When you pray with the help of the Holy Spirit, so he is the one called alongside to assist you, to pray, to beg, to intercede. In other words, he said, I, I am the comforter. I am the one that I'm called. I am called. That's my calling, to be with you, alongside you. When you pray with the help of the Holy Spirit, you will have 100 success in your prayers. Put your hand together, please. So... Lift your hands and say, the Holy Spirit, you are my comforter, my helper. Come and help me to pray, to intercede in all the affairs of my life. Okay, now we understand Jude chapter 1 verse 20. This is what the Bible calls a supernatural intercession. When the Holy Spirit gets involved in your prayer. Your prayer changes completely. Your prayer life changes. Because he brings the fire. He brings the vapor. He, br he brings the, the power. He brings the fire, the passion. 
So if the Holy Spirit is not involved in your prayer life, let me tell you, how do you know you don't? Because you never told him. You never ask him. So once he is involved, your prayer life changes. It, it, it stops to being bored, to be like, you know, fiery, passionate prayer life. Can I hear an amen, people? So be ye beloved. Build up yourself on your most holy faith. That holy faith had nothing to do with uh, healing, faith for healing or miracles, but that is the saving faith. In other words, he's saying, I want you to build up yourself in your most holy saving faith. In other words, once the foundation is put and is established, I want you to build up on top of that. And how do you do that? Praying in the Holy Ghost. He said, praying in the Holy Ghost. Okay, praying in the Holy Ghost is equivalent to say praying in the Spirit. Because you can pray in tongues. You can pray with your understanding, Spanish, English, French, whatever language, but also praying in the Holy Ghost. So you built up your faith. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15. And Aribo Shekalaba. So I want you to see something very powerful. So it is possible to build up after you have your faith in Christ, to build up your faith, to add into it. Now, what is it then? I will pray. Let's read it. One, two, three, go. I will pray with the Spirit. Oh, praying in the Spirit is praying in tongues. I will pray in the Spirit, and I will pray with my understanding also. See the difference? Now, that's why if I pray one hour, 50 minutes I pray in tongues. Why? Because I am praying the most effective prayer. So why am I going to try to invent myself? <laughs> no, I have to do it in tongues. I will sing in the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding. That is something we lost today. We don't sing in the Spirit anymore, meaning we don't sing in tongues anymore. So we understand that. And, but the Bible says when you pray in tongues, you build your faith up. You build up. You expand your capacity. Every time you pray in tongue, your capacity, spiritual capacity, to receive more of God and to grow expands. Uh, I can hear you. Okay, so I, can, I say, can I hear an amen? amen? Say, the Holy Spirit. Say, come and help me. No, no, but do it, do it, do it with the heart. Say, Holy Spirit, come and help me. I got 10 more minutes. So let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 26. This is the introduction to understand that without the Holy Spirit, there's no, there's no guidance, there's no teaching, there's no uh, comfort, there's no conviction. There's, if you got the Holy Spirit, how people, how people get saved? Because the conviction of the Holy Spirit. If we got the Holy Spirit out, how people will repent? There's no conviction. So how are you going to know that you are righteous? Because the Bible says God hears our righteous prayers. So you, the Holy Spirit convince you. He said, you are righteous as a God. Are you sending messages or are you, are you, are you hearing me? Okay, so now, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 26. This is the verse. I want you to lift your hands and say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. help me. To pray and to intercede. We're going to go to the regular translation, King James translation, 826 to 28. I want you to see it, and then we, if we don't finish it, we're going to finish tonight. Likewise. Likewise. Okay, read it. One, two, three, go. Again, the word help. See? The Holy Spirit, help. He's helping you. What is your wife for you? Is that her what? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I see him like a doubting, you know, like. 
No. Yeah, so is he less because he's helping you? He's a helper? No. But the, 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 the system of health system is in the woman. The woman, everything she is and she has, God created in a such a way to be a helper. Can, you, can I understand? So the Holy Spirit, the woman in the house, it doesn't mean you're going to be the boss. No, you are a helper. Don't take responsibility to be the head of the house. That's not your assignment. Your assignment is to help the big cabezón. The cabeza, the house, the head. You know what I mean? So in other words, is you a helper? In other words, we, I make so many mistakes in ministry. And one of the ways I made a mistake was sometimes we give the women things that they're not supposed to do. Because I believe in the women ministry. I believe and I support and I, and, and I will do it again, I will do it again. But the thing is, when sometimes you give the woman the authority, it, she's a help. In other words, she's a helper. She can do anything. Like, you want me to intercede? Go. You want me to praise? Go. You want me to sing? Sing. You want me to preach? Preach. But it doesn't mean she is the only thing she does because she's a system of help. So that's what the Holy Spirit is. Okay, let's read it. One, two, three, go. Likewise, the Spirit also help our infirmities. For we not not what should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself make intercession for us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. Verse 27. And he searches the heart, knoweth. What is the mind of the Spirit? Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, it doesn't finish. Verse 28. And then verse 28. Let's go. And we know all things work for good. Hey, wait, wait. Have you heard Christian quoting that verse? Oh, the, my house burned out, you know, and, and this worked for good. No. What he's saying is when you pray with the help of the Holy Spirit. He will accommodate things that happen for bad. He will put it for good. But your intercession will ordain those things. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. In other words, it's just, oh, all things work for you for good. No. If you pray in the Holy Spirit, Paul says, I pray more all of you. And the church had 50,000 members. And then he said, I pray more of you, Corinthians, because all things will accommodate. This happened for evil, and your prayer I will do that will, will work it for the, my will. So now we understand. And then he said, for them to love them, for that they are called according to a purpose. Now, let's go to 26, and now let's go into the Amplified Bible. 826. We, I can break it down. I enjoy studying this because I love the Holy Spirit. I enjoy to study because sometimes I don't see things, and I said, I read it 20 times, and then he just opened my eyes, and I, oh, praise Jesus. And... And in the same way, the Spirit comes to us and help us. Does He come and say, uh, how many of you pray this morning? How many of you prayed? One, two, three. The rest of how many of you slept until the service? Lift your hands. <laughs> Father, I repent. <laughs> Okay, this is so powerful. But how the Holy Spirit will not come to help you. He's not going to assist you if you don't ask for it. You just need to say, Holy Spirit, help me to pray. I don't know how to pray. So, okay, he said, help us and help us in our weakness. I love it. In our weakness. 
Okay, let's go in our weakness. Now let's go, this is the Amplified. And then he said, but the Spirit help us. He know our need at right in time. I want you to go to the Greek translation. And the Greek translation is not adding anything into the Bible. It just go how the writer thought, remember? If I say something now, one of the ways to study the Bible is to study the culture behind the words. You need to study the culture. What Jesus said when he said, the son of man, it was a code phrase to say the Messiah. But if you know the culture, you're not going to know it. So every Greek word, no, in, not infirmities, not infirmities, but is, is, there you go, help. The Holy Spirit will help us. Lift your hands, please, and say, Holy Spirit, I, I ask you to forgive me for ignoring you, not asking for help. Forgive me for grieving you, for quenching you. You've been waiting for me, and I have not obeyed. Forgive me, Holy Spirit. Say it louder, please. Forgive me, Holy Spirit. Okay, now. The word help is very, very, very simple. You don't have to be Greek to know it. You just got a strong concordance and you will find it. Son, anti lambano. He said, the Holy Spirit, help us. The word help. One short word is so large, so big in Greek. Son, which means join partnership. Anti means against. And lambano, which means to take to size, to desire, to forcefully take something. All the students of KJU say amen. amen. Only one say amen. My God. You need to be proud to belong to KJU. You go. Talk me talk. You haven't gone to university yet. Son, which means what? Join partnership. He said, the Holy Spirit, help us. Help of the Holy Spirit come against something. In other words, lambano, which means to take, to size, to forcefully take something. Go ahead, keep going. Okay, what, what are he saying? If we put that word together, it means the Holy Spirit join with us with passionate attitude and rage against the enemy. No, thank you. Just Prophet Eric is rejoicing here. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. So he's saying, I am waiting for you to ask me for help in your marriage. I, I, I'm waiting. There's some things you'll be praying for and you have, have a breakthrough. I, I want to give you a breakthrough. I want to take that thing out. I'm going to go against it. I'm going to come with rage. I'm going to come with power. I'm going to come to join you. And together, we're going to be partnered and we're going to get a victory. Somebody have to shout. In other words, it have to do with an attitude. Lift your hands and say, attitude. We lost, lift your hands please, lift your hands up high. We lost the attitude of, of, of a war because the Holy Spirit hasn't been involved. We lost that passionate to pray. Oh Jesus, you know, touch Lord. Touch. The Holy Spirit said, if I am your partner, I'm gonna put fire in your butt. I'm going to put Orika Labosho. Can you stop praying in the Holy Ghost? Itarabaku Shakalaba. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Spirit. In other words, he said, I am waiting for you, young person. I am waiting for you, family. I'm, I'm waiting for you to pray for your family, to pray for your children. I am waiting because I'm going to come against that thing that doesn't move. I'm going to come at, oh. Wow, the Holy Spirit help us 
Now say, help me, Holy Spirit. What does that mean? He's saying, the Holy Spirit come and join with us a passionate attitude and rage against the enemy. It is the desire of the Holy Spirit to be joined with us, to rage to remove all problems, issues, crisis, marriage problems, sickness, and oppression from our lives. In other words, what we pray him for is an issue. He said, I, I, when, I, when I join you in prayer, I'm going to bring that attitude of fight, and I will fight with you. That's powerful. Touch your neighbor and tell him, I'm finishing. I got three more minutes, zero minutes. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. Let's go again. Let's go. Romans 8, 26, and I finish with this. In the same way, the Holy Spirit, capital Spirit, comes to and help us in our weakness. Help us? Wow. You, he's going to come to help you if you ask him. Your prayer life will totally change. Amen. My prayer life totally changed. Because it becomes, so, sometimes it's so boring. What do I do? I don't know how to worship. So Holy Spirit, I want to worship my father. And suddenly that sing, song came out of me. And I start singing. Everybody's scared in the, the apartments and everybody, but, but that's okay. I say, Holy Spirit. <laughs> and then help us in our weakness. I love it. Help us in our weakness. Help us in our weakness. Help us in our weakness. The word weakness is the word, the Greek word asthenia. Asthenia. It's not a name. Don't put your, your daughter at that name. Asthenia, which means weakness, which means it's translated in English, another translation, it's translated infirmities see in English they put it weakness but if you go and no 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 let's go to in English let's go in English there's another translation regular King James version our infirmities that's what King James says look look what he says the Holy Spirit help us in our infirmities we are spiritually infirm He doesn't come because you're so powerful. He doesn't come because you're so cute. Even though you are touching every tell I'm, I'm so cute, Pinta. Hey, he comes because our infirmities. In the Spanish says weakness, one. But in English says infirmities. The word asthenia. But nothing to do with physical sickness. Is infirmities have nothing to do with physical sickness. Infirmities have to do with spiritual sicknesses. Spiritual infirmities, for example, for example, you and I, as natural man, as natural woman, no God in it, just us in our flesh. These are our infirmities. Spiritual. These are, number one, we are, listen, ignorant. That's the number one infirmity. We don't know how to pray, he said. <laughs> We're ignorant. Number two. Let's go. You should have it if you go in my notes. Number two, number two, we are limited. Let's see you know the whole Bible. Do you remember every verse? How can you apply it for your situation? You don't know. Number three, where is it? Number three, we are powerless. The Bible says flesh. In the natural, flesh in the natural, the Bible says, we, the flesh is weak. 
try sometimes to pray or to see God, and there's a moment that you say, man, I'm too tired. I'm, I can't pray. What do you do? Holy Spirit, help me and give me the strength to pray. Come on, come on. So he said, weak in the flesh, in the natural man, we are weak, powerless, ignorant, and limited. Those are the infirmities. In other words, he said, you're spiritually infirm. You, you can't pray according to my will. You don't know how to pray. You're ignorant. So he said, but I don't leave you ignorant. That's what I'm here. Amen. Oh, my God. So we go into that. Let's go into infirmities. Now, I want you to see what Paul was thinking about. Paul is my favorite author of the Bible. One of the authors of the Bible. Paul to me is like, I identify with Paul. So he's saying, the Holy Spirit help us in our infirmities. Underline it, son. Underline it. Infirmities. So he's saying, disregard that is physical. It's a spiritual. And ignorance is the strongest infirmity. We don't know. Oh, you, you don't understand. I read this book. No, we're ignorant. Otherwise, why he comes to help then? <laughs> he said, I help you in your infirmities. You're infirm. Now, I'm going to finish. Put the time and I'm off. So I'm finished. And then he goes, he's not talking about spiritual infirmities. But he's talking about, but he relates infirmities in it. Why? Even though it's a spiritual, he relates infirmities or not physical, but spiritual sickness. And I want you to see there are five types of diseases or sickness in the physical. And this he present, Jesus healed those five types. And he present to give us a message even though it's not infirmity in the physical but he used the word infirmity which is asthenia and asthenia describe five type of sicknesses physical terminal diseases cripple mental confusion plagues comatose and coma those five diseases Jesus healed. Plagues. Plagues. There's people that have a plague. They suffering of a plague. A plague is something that attack you, strike you, and leave you alone for a while, but you go back and strike you again. That's a, that's a plague. And then he said, Cripple people, invalid people, people that are terminal diseases, no cure, and people that are comatose. Jesus went to Nazareth, and the Bible says he didn't, he couldn't heal that many people, only sown comatose, the one that were unconscious. The people that were conscious that were, couldn't receive their healing. So many of you need some comatose to get a healing. <laughs> so, wow. What is he saying? And I finish with this. Without the Holy Spirit, we are terminal cases. That's what Paul is saying. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, we are crippled spiritually. Cripple in worship, cripple in preaching, cripple in teaching, cripple in praying, cripple, I, 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 I can't. Please depend more on the Holy Ghost. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. You, we are crippled. He's saying mental confusion. How many times I've been preaching and suddenly I got confused. And I said, Lord, why am I confused? I say, Holy Spirit, help me please. Because we're mentally confused. Without the Holy Spirit, we're being strike and strike and strike by the enemy, and, and we don't know how to overcome it. And lastly, 
comatose. We're in coma, spiritual coma. Without the Holy Spirit. That is the condition of the church in general. Terminal cases. Because the Holy Spirit is not anywhere. He's not taking care of. He, he's, he's ignored. So what is the point? The point is that he said the Holy Spirit will come and help us. Let's go back and I finish. Help us. He will come to assist alongside you. And he will be in partnership with you. And you will go against that situation. Can I hear an amen? So he said, and then he said, for we are not in our infirmities. He helped us in our infirmities. What does that mean? He said, without him, you can't do anything. Oh, because I got knowledge. Doesn't matter. We need him. We desperately need the Holy Spirit. We need to make room for the Holy Spirit. Oh, I wish I can hear an amen. For we not, there you go, ignorance. Ignorance is the biggest infirmity. If you ask the church today, what is the foundation of your faith as a believer? Only one of ten will respond correctly. Ignorance. Ignorance. Our infirmity, so we don't know what we should pray. What to pray? How to pray? Can you pray for my son? I can say, Lord, touch him, bless him. But the Holy Spirit knows exactly what's the root of the problem of your son. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what your daughter needs as a husband. See, you don't sound so excited about it. So the Holy Spirit knows exactly if that business is convenient to you. He knows exactly. So he said, I, you sure, you don't know as we ought to. The word ought to, you, you know what that means? Obligation, a necessity. He said, prayer is not just an, an option, option. Prayer is a necessity. It's an obligation. You, you don't, you, if I fail today, no, I, I have to pray. But the Holy Spirit make intercession. The Holy Spirit make intercession. The Holy Spirit, and I'm going to use an example. Come over here, Mike. Or Ronald, either one. So he's, he, he's praying. And he's praying for an issue that he has with his brother or sister or somebody. And he's praying. But he said, Holy Spirit, I don't know how to pray. And the Holy Spirit said, I know the will of God for your brother. I know what's the root of the, his problem. I know how to attack that problem. I know what demons oppress in him. I know his future. So he said, I know everything about him. So I'm waiting for you to ask me. And the Holy Spirit will come. And then he said, the Holy Spirit made intercession. So he comes alongside. Alongside. He said, son, we're going to do it together. Now, when he comes to partner with you, he doesn't come with a nice, like, the word auntie. Son, auntie Lambano. Come to assist you alongside against the issue of your brother the issue of your brother I am joined with you and then he said and I will we're gonna you're gonna pray just lend me your belly lend me your mouth Lift your hands to the Lord. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. 
Lend me your mouth. Lend me your stomach. Let, let me your belly because I need your belly, son. I, I am the one that I, I have an attitude of rage. I'm against the enemy. I, he's attacking your children. He's attacking your brother. I'm going to go against the enemy. You're going to do it together. Oh, my God, I feel the power of God. The Holy Spirit. Come on, come on, come on. And he started praying in the Holy Ghost. He started praying. Wait, wait. And there's a moment. There's a moment. And then he said, Make intercession for us with groaning. And the word groaning, look, look at peace. Look, look. The word groaning means to aspirate, to vent, to sigh like. <sighs> In other words, he doesn't come like, Hallelujah. He come like, come on, son, I got a fire. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Every family. Take somebody, any family member. Take somebody, come on quickly. Take by the hand a family member. A family member. If you don't have any family member, no, no one, no problem. Put lay hands on your stomach. Lay hands on your stomach. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, quickly. Okay, listen, listen, listen. Listen, how many of you had had an issue for a long time? Your family, your finances, and you've been struggling. You've been fighting. Now you invite him to come. Holy Spirit, come to my crisis. Come to my ditch. Come with me. Take me by the hand. We're going to fight against that issue. We're... I can't hear you. See, you need to change that attitude, passive attitude. You need to have an attitude when the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come. I pray for the will of God for my children. I pray for the will of God for my, my son. I pray for the will of God for those that are watching online. One, two, three. God, come on, come on. Holy Spirit, come on, help us, help us, help us, help us, help us, salvation, salvation for your family. Those that are watching, how many people are watching line? Come on. If there's a new song, release it. On that Uriba Katakaba. Come on, Leboshe. Sometime, sometime, the Holy Spirit leads you to walk. The Holy Spirit leads you to walk. Sometimes He 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 leads you to walk. Ikalabaha. Come on, lead you to walk. Come on, walk, walk. Pray, pray. Tell that situation. Holy Spirit, I present my health. My health. Oh, go Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Move. Move, 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 move. Iolava Karabaha. Isha, come on, move. Move. Pray for that situation. Family members, family members, family members. Come on, lift your hand. Don't look at me. Pray, press. Uka, raka, heyo lobosta, heyo lobosta. Sometime he leads you to pray. Sometime he leads, come on, come on, come on. Lift your hands quickly, lift your hands. Oh, rebakata kabra. Close your eyes and pray against that situation. Holy Spirit. Use my belly, use my womb to pray for the purposes of my children. I can't hear you. Maybe you're praying for a house. Maybe you're praying for a breakthrough in your finances. I need help, musician. You need to get up, get up the music. Get it up, get it up. Each of Calabarra. Praying, orando los mujeres. Orando en el Espíritu. Praying in the Spirit. I Calabarra. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. The attitude of passion. The attitude. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against any. That he's coming to your ditch. He's coming into you. The problem. He's coming into your crisis. Pray. 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 Those who are watching online, don't get disconnected. Lift your voice. Pray for the children. Pray for the finances. Any situation. Oh, come on, Domito, louder, louder. Where are the young people? Where are the young people? 
You need to be walking here, young people. Walk, young people. Walk, 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 young people. Never shikarabaha. Come on, lift your hands. See, come out of your passivity. Come out of your passivity. Come out of your passivity. Ikurabaka, command that situation. Tell them, leave, leave, leave. Urabakata, pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Tell them, Holy Spirit, come and help me. Take me out of this ditch. Take me out of this issue. Take me out of this problem. Hands up. La mano arriba. Ey, robosha. Ey, robosha. Pray. Pray. Come out. Come on, Holy Spirit. Help me to pray for my own saved family. My family is not saved, Lord. Please help me to pray for my mom. Pray, pray me to pray for my brother. Pray, her, free, e, e. I can't hear the voice. Eco, Allah, Allah, Boro Sheka, Allah, Bo Sheka Rabaha, Eo Lobo Saka Rabaha. Okay, Rebeto Koraba. You don't have a new song now. Get a new song. I have to do war. E Kalabarobosha. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, Apostle Tommy, you need to be more war. War, I see you passive. Come on, war. War, war. Come on, come on, young people, where are you? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray, hey, Holy Spirit, help me. I can't come out of this. It's too hard on me. Help me, please, help me. Assist me. Help me to pray. And you start praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost, out loud. One, two, three, now. Now, now, now. Ora, I pray for your children. Pray, pray, Holy Spirit, help me to pray for my son. Pray for, pray for my children. Pray for my daughter. Pray for the health. Oka, pray, rika, urabaka, doshakalaba, dosha. Don't stay there just watching. Pray, pray, pray for the Lord to open doors in the school, in the university. Pray for businesses. Pray for things that you never prayed before. Pray in the Holy Ghost. He's helping you. He's helping you. He's helping you. Pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. One, two, three, pray. to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. Wait, 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 wait. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Everybody, every hands up. I can see that your attitude hasn't changed. And many of you, lift your hands to the Lord. I'm going to give you the last opportunity. When I count to three, let that belly come out of you. And you speak in tongues, you pray in tongues out loud. You will see the shift in your prayer, even in your tongues. Lift your hands quickly. Those watching online, Holy Spirit, come and release the spirit of prayer. We join with you, join with us to intercede for things that we don't know how to pray, but we pray in the Holy Ghost. Let that vapor, let that fire, let the Holy Ghost ignite us. One, two, three, now. Pray, 
Rika la baka la baka la um la baka la bakoto he la baka talaba. Holy Spirit help us. Holy Spirit help us to come against. To come against. Holy Spirit help us to come against. To come against. Join with me. Join with us. Be my partner. Be my partner in prayer. Did that attitude change? I can hear the voice of high, of high. Maybe there's an issue in your job. There's an issue in your finances. Come on. your hand together people your prayer life will never be the same again as long as you allow him as long as you intercede for him as long as you let him do it with you you will never be the same and you will have the most effective prayer life that you ever had make a list of all your issues you've been fighting and you say I haven't seen in the breakthrough write them down Tonight, we're going to do a night of intercession and warfare for the unsaved families. How many of you have unsaved families? Tonight, we're going to do an intercession and we're going to pray with the Holy Ghost and we're going to see all your family members come to the church. Come tonight. Come tonight and you will see every family member because he knows exactly how to touch them, how to get them, how to be. Oh, Jesus. Give Jesus a big breath. How many of you feel that passion back? Your attitude of, I'm going to fight. Oh, Jesus. One, two, three, shout. Take your seat, touch your neighbor, and tell him I am in fire for praying. Oh! Yeah. Quickly, quickly, take your seat, please. Take your seat quickly, quickly, quickly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. Oh, my God, I feel that a load I release the burden of the Lord don't, don't, don't get up yet sit down take it quickly quickly when I teach what I want what the Holy Spirit wanted I feel like a burden came off of me how many of you learned something how many learned something I want you to go study it I want you to go and, and meditate on it, think about, go to the verses and say Holy Spirit help me that's what he's waiting for it's so simple now, how many of you know, you heard, and, and I prophesy from this pulpit, what is happening in the worldwide economy right now? There's a crisis, even in our nation, inflation, 
um, what you bought yesterday for $100. You go to the store, to the groceries, buy groceries, and you can even buy like two things because everything became so expensive. It's not only Florida, it's everywhere. I have sons in 60 countries and they tell me the same thing. The, the inflation, the economy, and I just want to remind you something. I remind you something. Are you with me? I remind you that the source of your provision is the Lord. Trust Him. Come on, put your hand together. Trust Him. Trust Him. The Lord was teaching me one of these days, and He was teaching me how the enemy works against us. And one of the ways he works is, and it described in one of his names, Diablos. Diabolos. D means one who penetrates the mind from one side to another. And bolos means to strike, to strike, to strike. So if you put Diablos, someone that strikes your mind with a thought until he penetrates your mind from one side to another and this is what he's using the inflation the economy is very bad how are you going to feed your children what is going to happen you don't have no papers you illegal you this you that just remind him do not let that thought work in your mind take him captive your god will provide one of the least things that I am concerned about my personal life and the church and ministry is the, the least thing is the finances. I will do and I'll be wise to handle it. But I understand, I trust God 100%. And I trust the Holy Spirit tell me how to pray. And I know because we are in the center of the will of God. I know, I know I am in the center of the will of God. And when you are in the will of God, you will always have provision. Can you put your hand together? So this morning, I want to give you that word of encouragement. If you've been attacked and the enemy tried to penetrate your mind, no, you're not going to sign that contract. You're not going to be able to make it. And those thoughts come into your mind. Who do you think you are? You can't do that. You can, and then, then you, the, the, he tried to penetrate and he strike and he strike, he strike your mind until you open your mind. So my advice to you is to say, God, I take that thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus. How many of you trust that God will provide in the crisis? How many of you are, are, are faithful tithers? If you're faithful tithers, God will do the rest. Don't worry about it. I just want to make sure I am obeying God, bringing my tithe and offering. How many of you brought your first fruit to God? So don't you think he's going to see that? So he's taking care of you. So I'm going to ask you, if you need an envelope, please lift your hands. Those faithful tithers, if you're going to bring your first fruit, whatever you're going to bring, or special offering, if you're one of those Gideons that you committed to sow, into the harvest please you can even uh, bring it to the altar we're going to receive it here uh quickly lift your hands quickly if you're going to do it through the phone john uh, apostle john yes if you need an envelope go ahead and raise your hand and for those that are watching us online it's a morning of breakthrough it's a morning that we see the spirit helping us in every area including our finances but we have to take a corresponding action for the faith to operate needs to work so you could do right now by sending your tithe offerings or if you still have some first fruits you want to send go ahead and do it you can call us at 305-382-317179 and then uh, call the number on the screen and then somebody will be there to receive your or your donation you can also go to our website kingjesus.org slash donate you can also text us to 77977 you put kjm miami and the amount that you want to give and of course if you're in some other place you could do it through whatsapp by putting plus one and putting the number that you see on the screen, 305-382-3171, or the number that you see right on the screen. So 
take action right now. And if you're a House of Peace leader or a leader of disciples, come on up and bring your offerings here to the baskets that we have in the front. Don't miss this opportunity to get into what God is doing this morning. The hands to the Lord. Do you want to know more about the Holy Spirit? I wrote this book called Divine Encounter with the Holy Spirit. And it tells you his assignments. It tells you how to have a close relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because he is a person. He's not an eat. He's not a force. He's a person. So there's a package that comes with it. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, face to face with God, and divine encounter with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to give it to a one of, of a people that intercede for me with the Holy Spirit. That you regularly intercede for me. Um, daughter, can you give it to her? Thank you so much for interceding. That is the best honor you can give me. Your prayers. I need your prayers. Are uh, you so excited? Or maybe you fought too much. Are you tired? So I'm going to ask you uh, tomorrow. I want you to come to the house of prayer. We're going to do it together. And we're going to do exactly what we did. And tonight, I'm going to give the second part. Apostle Tommy and I, we're going to do a tag team. And we're going to hit her heart tonight. Can I hear an amen on that? So please come tomorrow. And... Um, so I am, I am so full of joy. I'm so full of joy. Now, we're going to pray. Father, we, John, did you pray? Did you pray for the, uh, for the Francis? C can you pray quickly? Lift your hands to the Lord. Thank you for your tithing, for your offerings. Those that are watching online, thank you so much. I, we appreciate it. You help us to preach the gospel and to go reap the harvest, gather the harvest in so many nations. So thank you so much. Thank you for, contrib for letting the Holy Spirit help you uh, in this case is to pray. Well, we pray. Father, we thank you this morning for each person that is bringing a tithe offering first fruits. We pray, Lord, that your blessing be released from heaven. Father, that new creative ideas would come to them, that you open new doors, new ways, new yes, ideas, new grace, new favor. Yes, Lord. Be upon your people today. Father, we declare that the devourer is rebuked and the finances of your people are blessed regardless of the economy, of the situations. Lord, we connect to your economy through these tithes and offerings. Multiply them, Lord, and use them to advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 I'm going to ask the church to close your eyes. What a powerful service. My God, the Holy Spirit is here. Close your eyes now. I'm going to ask everybody to pray in tongues. Come on, pray. Pray with the knowledge that souls are coming today. There's somebody here who came today, and the Holy Spirit, he began to convict you even last night. Close your eyes. Don't look at me. Pray in the Spirit. He convicted you and convinced you last night that today was the day to give your life to Jesus. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to you all week saying, son, daughter, it's time to come home. Well, Apostle said it so powerfully. He's here to help you. If you came here with an addiction, he's here to help you with addiction. If you came here with depression, the Holy Spirit is here to help you today. If you came carrying a spirit of grief, well, the Holy Spirit is here to be your joint partner, to take that away from you. Will you come? The Holy Spirit is tugging at you right now. He's saying, daughter, son, you've been away too long. I'm calling you back home. The prodigal sons and daughters, God has been calling you. The Holy Spirit has been whispering in your ear. He's been removing friends. He's been isolating you, not because he hates you, because he's calling you home. If you're here today with every head bowed and every eye closed, and you know the Holy Spirit has been talking to you. You know you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. You never said, Holy Spirit, I want to be a joint partner with you. I can hear some people saying, I'm tired of failing. Well, there's no failure in God. 
when you when you have a joint partner with the Holy Spirit he will make your way prosperous and he will give you success the most important success is not your business success it's your soul success he says above all I pray that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers the Holy Spirit is calling today if you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus the Holy Spirit is going to help you today. I just on a count of three, I just want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Come on. If you're giving your life to Christ, God bless you. If you're giving your life to Christ today, you're saying, Holy Spirit, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to step out. Raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. There's another call. You're here, and you gave your life to Christ, but you backslid. You lost your way. But today on February 25th, you're going to make a decision and say, Holy Spirit, I want to be reactivated. I want to be restored. I want to come back home. If that's you, on a count of three, raise your hand. One, two, three. Prodigal sons and daughters, raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you raise your hand on either one of those, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Come on. The Holy Spirit is with you. Come on, church. The Holy Spirit is with you. Now come down the altar as you stand to your feet. Come down the altar. We're going to pray with you. We're going to join you up with the Holy Spirit. We're going to partner you today. Come on. Come on, church. I need you to clap your hands. I need you to see your loved ones coming. Come on. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Clap your hands. God bless you. Come on. There are more coming. There are more coming. God bless you. He was speaking to you. He was speaking to you last night. It was you. It was you he was speaking to. Come on. I, believe, I dare you to clap your hands and more will come. I dare you to clap your hands and pray in the spirit and more will come. I just want you to lift your hands. We're going to pray a prayer. But before we pray, I perceived that there was a young man who's a soccer player and the Lord told you to come. You're here today. There's room for you today. Where are you? The God, God is calling you to come closer. If that's you, come. Run, run, run. Run down the aisle. Run down the aisle. If that's you, there's room at the altar for you. That's why we're here. We're here for you. We're here for the souls. If you're here today, don't let pride keep you in that seat. If you need help today, help is here at the altar. Come down. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. God bless all of you. So beautiful. Just lift your hands. You're going to have an experience today. Lift both of your hands. Both of your hands says I'm all in. Yeah, that's it. That's it. The presence of God is touching the people. Just lift your hands. I want you to repeat after me. I want you to, I want you not just to repeat it. I want you to say it with your whole heart. Close your eyes and say, Heavenly Father, I recognize that I am a sinner and that my sin separates me from you. I, I repent from all of my sin all of my iniquity, all of my transgressions, every spirit of bitterness, I break every pact with the world, with the devil, with this age, with my flesh. Today, I confess Jesus as my Lord. I voluntarily welcome you, Jesus, in my heart. Holy Spirit, make yourself known to me. And on the day that I die, when I open my eyes, I will be in your arms forever. Amen. Church, can we clap our hands? Oh, it's so beautiful. You can see what's happening here. Lives are being touched. This was for you. Your past is behind you. Your past is erased and is behind you. No more shame. No more shame. God is loving you. He's loving you. He's been waiting for you to come. He's been waiting for you to come. He's been waiting for you to come. Come on and clap your hands. Turn around. Somebody's here.
here to hug you. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Come on, people of God. Turn around, follow that flag. Follow that red flag. Church, when you see them, you need to see your family members coming. Come on and give God some praise. Come on, Pastor Jennifer. God bless you. Hallelujah. Can you give the Lord a hand clap for these souls? Praise Jesus. We want to remind you that Apostle's going to be doing a tag team tonight with Apostle Tommy, so please come back to the 6 p.m. service. You can remain standing. We're going to dismiss. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your power, for your presence, for your love. Lord, we declare over your sons and daughters this morning, Lord, that they are the head and not the tail. Father, that as they continue throughout this week, they will have suddenlies in your presence, God. They will have suddenlies where your Holy Spirit just takes over and leads them to pray. God, that it doesn't stop when they leave this morning, but rather it continue on throughout the week, throughout their families, God, in their businesses, their homes, their personal lives. Father, we cover them with the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and declare their blessed coming in and going out in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, church. We will see you back here tonight at 6 p.m.